Hello. So at this point in your programming career, you probably all have a decent intuition about when to use lists or when to use dictionaries to represent different data. Another really important way to represent data is with a graph. There's lots of real world problems. I'm maybe giving examples of these um, that, that can kind of be represented with graphs. And um, in graphs, the basic idea is that we have two parts of them. We have nodes and nodes could represent any sort of entity in the world, maybe a person or an intersection or any, any number of things. I'll, I'll be giving examples. And then we have edges that connect nodes and that could represent any kind of different relationship. <clears throat> so let me, let me give some examples here. Um, one is get. We've already been using get for a while now. And um, in get, we have commits. And then there's relationships between commits, right? I can maybe say that C is based on B, or, or maybe this commit down here, commit one is also based on B. And, and so any sort of, um, uh, any sort of uh, uh, Git repository is a graph, right? With both nodes and edges. Um, nodes are commits, edges are these relationships between commits. Um, other example, um, let's say you're interested in understanding uh, politics. Uh, what you could do, or this person did, is they created a node for every um, uh, for every senator uh, in the federal government, and then they wanted to try to figure out are there kind of any clusters or, or kind of relationship patterns. And in this case, it's not so clear what does it mean for there to be an edge between uh, two senators or not. Um, there's not kind of that immediately in the data. So the whoever was making this design had to come up with that. And what they did is they had some sort of measure of, well, how often do these two senators uh, vote with each other? And then the more often they vote, we'll have a stronger edge between them. So really there's an edge between every two senators here, uh, but some of those edges are stronger, um, stronger than others. And then if they run some sort of thing where while well, edges pull each other kind of in a, some sort of physics simulation, what you'll see is that um, um, is that, well, you can kind of get a sense, well, you know, the red nodes, which are Republicans, tend to vote together. The blue nodes uh, uh, tend to vote uh, vote together. And then you can see interesting things, for example, like, you know, here's an independent, and you can see, well, that independent is more, um, maybe uh, might be more like a Democrat in terms of where they're positioned, or we can get some sense of who are the moderates. So if we can take some data and we can kind of carefully define the nodes and edges, well, then we can maybe actually get some kind of visual insights into what's going on and an otherwise very complicated problem, right? It's very complicated to kind of uh, cluster or categorize uh, politicians, right? Um, some of you might uh, be from a biology background. And here, here's a graph where I want to understand the relationship between um, various animals, right, that are, are kind of alive today. So all the animals that are alive today uh, are here on the right. And then uh, you can see that there's edges, right? These kind of square edges. Maybe if I kind of zoom in, right? The marsupial mole and the wombat, uh, kangaroo, possum, koala, both come up to here. here. Here's actually a node. It's just kind of an intersection between these edges. And, and that represents some sort of um, inferred common um, ancestor, right? So this, this kind of graph is a special kind of graph. It's a tree. We're gonna be learning about different kinds of graphs in this course. And, uh, and, um, and and kind of this tree helps us understand the evolution of all of these different uh, kind of animals, right? It's a phylogenetic tree. So that's gonna be something that's also very useful. Um, and kind of our uh, individual, uh, or kind of, um, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Um, and kind of our friendships and relationships, we can also represent that, right? Maybe every person in the world um, is a node and then a friendship between pe two people you could think of, uh, of as an edge. And so this was actually something that an intern at, at Facebook did, did that kind of they made a big news um, where they, they represented this for every every person in the world and, and their friendships. And maybe you can see, well, I don't know, maybe people travel between certain pairs of, of countries um, and, and things like that, right? So it's kind of a lot of nodes and a lot of edges here. It's very hard to visualize at that scale. Um, let me see here. Uh, this one was actually something that some students of mine did. They uh, uh, they were trying to understand um, basically spending within the city of Madison. And what you're actually going to notice is, is kind of if you uh, work in a big complicated organization, uh, there's kind of this weird thing where there's like different departments and they actually will spend money um, between each other. Right? It's kind of weird to think of like, well, the city of Madison 
is paying some other part of the city of Madison for something. Uh, but that makes all kinds of, uh, of kind of accounting details easier. So for example, one of the things they'll do is they have like a fleet services that's in charge of vehicles. And then there's many other departments that will uh, basically rent those vehicles from them. So, so rather, for example, than the fire department or parks and police owning their own vehicles, they're, they're basically renting those from the fleet services and then kind of internally doing billing. So we can kind of see, um, you know, e even though this is like kind of consolidated, and that makes sense. We can still see, well, uh, you know, how much are we kind of spending from the fire department on vehicles? And, and so here we have some sort of flow, right, where we have um, a bunch of nodes over here. Uh, which are organizations that are spending money. And then here's organizations where the money is going to, you know, the, the fleet services, the largest workers, comp, traffic engineering, um, insurance, so on and so forth. This is another special kind of graph. Uh, it's a Sanke uh, plot that's showing that. And, um, and so you can kind of understand these relationships. And of course, the most important thing here is really the, the strength of those edges, right? How much you know, I don't just care that money is flowing from the streets uh, agency to fleet services, but I care how much money um, is flowing along that edge. Um, one last one here is that uh, streets actually, it turns out, um, are also graphs. I can think of every intersection as a node. And then edges are streets that connect intersections. And so if I can have algorithms that help me think about these graphs and how uh, you know, I could take a series of edges to get from one point to another. I could do something like build Google Maps or kind of, um, you know, infer whether there are new streets that I should be um, developing. Let me let me close a bunch of these. And I'm going to head back here. And, and so we're going to be talking a lot about graphs and, and kind of starting with trees. <coughs> um, but, but there's different ways we might want to do graphs. So I've shown a lot of examples where we just want to visualize it. And for that, we're going to be learning this tool called GraphViz. And so GraphViz is good for making a, a kind of a, a good picture to share with people. And, and in the vast majority of cases, if you have a good picture of a graph, it's a relatively simple graph. Otherwise, it just doesn't really fit on the page. Maybe that Facebook um, friends example was an exception. Um, so we're going to start with visualization. I think that's a little easier to wrap our heads around. Uh, but pretty soon, we're going to have a separate way of kind of constructing graphs, which will be from our own classes that we're constructing, where I have often have classes for like a node and another class for an edge, and we're going to use that to build our graphs. And, and that's going to be more appropriate if we have kind of a lot of data to deal with. Okay, so today is just graph viz, so I can introduce a bunch of concepts. So I'm going to say from graph viz import, uh, I'm going to just import graph. And, um, and, and you, there's some details in the reading that you're going to have to go through to be able to make this work, right? Um, I've already kind of done all of that installation, so that works just fine. And so I can create a new graph object like this, and I can I can see it. And um, and then the simplest graph, I guess, just would have maybe one node called A. Right? I see there's my node. Um, if I want to, <coughs> in GraphViz, I can separate. I can have like a a name for the node, and then actually. Um, which I'm going to use in code, and then I can have well, what actually gets displayed. So now the A node um, is called Madison, right? Um, if I wanted to start thinking about kind of a rough idea of, of maybe like the streets in the Midwest or kind of the, the roads, um, maybe I'll add Chicago here, like so. And, and then I might want to note that while there are roads that are connecting Madison and Chicago, you can drive from one uh, to the other, right? Neither one is an island, right? So I can say g dot edge, and um, and I can say, well, I want a street between between Madison and Chicago. Okay, um, so that's all fine. Um, now it, it's kind of weird, but if I wanted to, there's nothing stopping me from having uh, two edges between the same two nodes. I want you to just think for a moment. Can you think of a reason, maybe for Madison and Chicago specifically, why, why I might want to have these two edges here between these? What might that represent? Um, for those of you who have, have made that trip, right, it's time Chicago's a nice place to visit, uh, that's not too far from us, you often have this choice, right? You can pay to go on these toll roads, right? And you have to pay, I don't know, maybe you'll pay 5 to $10, maybe more to get there. Um, and, and then you'll get there kind of quickly. Or you can take a longer route that is free, right? So there are kind of two ways to get between Madison and Chicago with trade-offs. One is cheaper and, and one is uh, one is faster. 
Um, I might also, you know, there are sometimes cases where I can have a node from uh, from a city to itself, right? I mean, there's certainly ways I could, you know, from Madison down on the belt line and then kind of pop back into Madison. Um, that, that's not too strange, right? Uh, so, so kind of back to this idea, I'm not gonna do that for now. Um, in terms of having these two edges, right? There's two ways to get to um, Chicago. Maybe I want to somehow indicate that. And so on either an edge, either on either an edge or a node, I, I can add what I call metadata, right? I mean, the, the core data is well the nodes and the relationships between them. Metadata is telling me a little bit extra about those nodes and edges. And so one way I could visualize that uh, is by passing in a label, right? So I could say something like time equals two hours and 40 minutes. And um, I could I could make a note here. There's no tolls. Tolls are when I pay to use the road. And um, and then for the other one, maybe I'll say um, you know let's say it takes like three hours and ten minutes. Uh, but guess what? It's free. Okay. So that that's that's good. Now one thing I want to point out about GraphViz that's not great is that you can pass in whatever parameters you want. And some of them are meaningful, but if I pass in, you know, like a garbage param equals ha ha, uh, it just does nothing, right? Which is a little bit confusing, right? So, so if you're doing this and it's not working, for example, double check that you spelled it right. You don't get errors in graph is, uh when you might expect to, even when you do something wrong. So I guess you have to, more so than usual, kind of stare at your code and make sure you aren't um, kind of making a silly mistake, right? So, so how can I figure out which things are valid to pass here? And, um, and the documentation is a little bit horrible, so I think that I want to spend at least a little bit of time trying to explain um, how to read it. And so there's a link in the reading over to this page, which is um, attributes, right? So node, edge, and graph attributes. And, and the attributes are passed in, I guess, just as a parameters, right? So they're kind of using label as, a, as an attribute for an edge. And, um, and so they have this abbreviation, like they have um, N is node, E is edge, G is graph. They also have clusters, which we won't talk about. Clusters are C. And if I want to look down here, um, maybe I'll just say, uh, let's look at color, right? So by color, it says I have E and C. And what that means is that I can pass in a color for an edge, a node, and then a cluster, which I'm not going to really care about. Right, so so if I wanted to, right, I can um, head back here, and I can say, well, this one where I'm, um, let's say I'm kind of using the toll roads, I want that to really stand out. So I'm allowed to pass in color here, and, and say that that's red, um, right, and you can see that that below. There's also a little bit farther down. I'll give another example. I think it's called pen width. Pen width is for clusters, nodes, and edges. And I can kind of show how thick the line is, right? So I could say pen width equals, um, I don't know, I'll pass in three. Let, let me do this first. I'm going to pass in three, and I see I get this kind of weird um, error, right? Expected a string or bytes like object. And the deal here is that for whatever reason, they want everything to be a string with graph is kind of a weird design. Uh, but even even I have to kind of pass in my numeric things as, as strings, so uh, uh, just something to get used to. Um, so, so you can imagine lots of cases where we might have metadata on both nodes and edges. Um, you know, if nodes are people, right, and edges are the relationships between them, well, what might I know about people? I might know their social security number or their birth date or their address or their phone number. Um, if I'm talking about edges between people, there's lots of relationships, right? I mean, there's um, uh, maybe kind of work relationships or, or kind of maybe it's your sibling or your friend or your parent, right? So lots of cases where I have kind of additional information about our both nodes um, and, uh, and edges. Okay, so I'll cut off there. In the next video, we'll talk about paths and kind of more complicated graphs.